Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, Dave Madden. Today's date is Monday the 17th of September and the time has just gone 9.02 British summer time. Um, basically the big stories uh, over the past few days have been increased uh, trade tensions between the United States of America and China. Uh, it's looking likely that the, that the US are, are, are uh, edging closer to imposing tariffs on $200 billion worth of Chinese imports. But it was also cited in, in the same article that the US government are looking to impose a 10% levy on those $200 billion worth of Chinese imports rather than the 25% uh, levy that they're originally talking about. So it's believed that the United States um, haven't have gone with the, are, are, are planning on going with the lower rate as a way of a, uh, as a way of putting some pressure on the, on the Beijing government and should they feel the need to put additional pressure they can always ramp up the rate from there so we saw we, we saw um, stock markets in China um, sell off overnight we've seen a, a bit of a sell off in, in Europe this morning uh, it is worth pointing out that um, the trade tensions have been have been getting get, getting getting worse between the US and China for some time so even though we are seeing equity markets lower um, in, in Europe this morning and in Asia overnight, a, a, certain, amount, a certain amount of this uh, has already been priced in. A certain amount of this has already been expected. Um, one, one topic which is sort of off the radar for a few weeks is, is back on the radar again, and that would be emerging market economies. Uh, the Indian rupee has fallen to a new all-time low, and the South African rand and the Turkish lira are, are, lower, uh, are lower again this morning. Uh, we haven't seen major sell-offs in, in those particular currencies, but given that... Um, we, we did see U.S. government bond yields uh, on the ten-year on the ten-year government bond uh, back in the Friday uh, go just north of three uh, percent. We could potentially see uh, brute interest in the U.S. dollar and also U.S. government bonds in the near term, given that the Federal Reserve are having the meeting next week. And should we see a push higher uh, in U.S. government bond yields and also the U.S. dollar, we could see additional pressure being applied to emerging market emerging market currencies, and that could trigger fears about the, the, the stability in many emerging market economies around the world, which can then spill over to a sell-off in, in, um, in more West Western uh, economies. Uh, take a look now at the week ahead. Uh, the week ahead article can be found on our website if you go to cmcmarkets.com and then go under news and analysis, uh, you, you'll find the week ahead article. So starting with today, Monday, uh, we, we, later today, we will have first quarter figures out from FedEx. Um, looking ahead to Wednesday and Thursday, we have UK CPI and UK retail sales. Also, also on Wednesday, uh, we have the Bank of Japan interest rate decision. No, no change expected there. On Thursday, sorry, apologies. On Wednesday, we have uh, first half figures out from Kingfisher, listed in London. On Thursday, we have the Swiss National Bank, the SNB, uh, will, will release their interest rate decision. Uh, with the S&P, there's no, no, no change uh, expected to the interest rate policy. Uh, on Thursday, Darden, um, the restaurant group over in the US, they will, they will report their first quarter figures. Uh, on Friday, we, we have full year figures from uh, Smith's group listed here in, in London. And also on Friday, we have both Canadian CPI and Canadian retail sales. So taking a look now uh, at some of the major markets, so starting off with the FTSE 200 which is a touch lower uh, this Monday morning. So the FTSE 100, uh, as you can see, for the last, for the last say, six or seven weeks has been in a downward trend. Uh, we, because if you take a, starting off with, um, the, with the high from from, uh, from from early August, market pushed lower, creating a lower low, pushed higher, lower high, and then only last week fell back, fell back to a level here not seen since April. So I'll give you an idea, idea how, how negative sentiment was. And most of last week, we did see the market manager kind of bounce off and you know, recover somewhat from those lows. But bearing in mind, we're still well below this level here, this red line, the 30 moving average, which is often seen as a fairly good barometer of whether a market is is a uh, is uh, is uh, is, uh, is, in, is enduring positive or negative sentiment, and it's well below the 30 moving average. We're not too far away from the from the multi-month lows, and like I said, we are lower again today. So if you did manage to take out uh, last week's low, we could be looking at heading back down towards this area here. Uh, which comes into play at 7,188. And if you break below that, then we head back down to levels not seen uh, since early April. Uh, so we'll be kind of fre fresh multi month lows. Should we, should we head down there? Uh, could you manage to kind of push higher um, on the on the FTSE 100? Keep an eye out for this, this level in, uh, in around here, which comes into play at 7,422. It's the kind of the uh, it's the um, 
the low of, uh, of Friday the 31st of August. And if you manage to kind of push beyond that, an early key from our four will be this red line here, the eternity moving average, which comes to play at 7,487. Uh, you can see that notice how the, the eternity moving average acted as a support back in uh, back in mid-August and also acted as resistance on a couple of occasions in early September. And if a metric has a history of acting as support, as both support and or resistance recently, that means it makes it all more likely it will do so again in the near term. Taking a look now at what's going on over in Germany in the DAX. The DAX has been in fairly weak shape for a number of months now. Uh, similar to the FTSE, uh, last week the DAX hit a multi-month low, back to levels not seen since early April, so once again quite negative sentiment. It's been in a very clear downward trend since late July. Lower low, lower high, another lower low, and a lower high. And notice how when the market did manage to rally here, it rallied back up to, to this area, which is in around 12,120, uh, an area which acted as very decent support on a couple of occasions back in June and also in August. So that area was, was pretty significant back then, and once again, it was acted as very significant uh, in, in mid September. So while we remain south of this region here, uh, which comes into play in around 12,120, uh, it's likely that the outlook for the DAX is going to remain negative. And if we do look, if we do head south from here, we could be looking at our, uh, heading back below 12,000, and a move back below 12,000 could put the recent low on the uh, on the um, on the on the radar, which comes into play in around 11,864. And if we go south of that, we could be looking heading back down towards this region here, this this region here, uh, not seen since the beginning of the year, uh, in around the 11,690 area. Uh, any moves to the upside uh, in the uh, in the DAX may run into resistance in around the 12,250 area. We did see a bit of consolidation and and, uh, and in, the, in, the, in that area recently enough. And if you push higher from there, another key up on that for will be this blue line here, the 50 moving average, which comes into play uh, at 12,440. Also, on a few occasions, we, we did, even though the market did trade above, it did act as, as a bit of a consolidation area, uh, both um, in, in later August and also in, in early August. But the real metric to keep an eye out for will, will, of course, be the Thursday moving average, this red line here at 12,637. As I said, it's often seen as a good barometer of whether, you know, a very simple, simple gauge of whether a market is a as positive sentiment or negative sentiment, and given that we're well below the dirty moving average, it really kind of sums up how, how negative sentiment is in relation to the DAX. On the flip side, U US markets are looking is still in fairly good shape, even though uh, we have seen a bit of a sell-off in recent sessions. So taking this this year is the Dow Jones, and the Dow Jones has been basically broadly speaking uh, been been been, uh, been pushing higher since since April, and it's been a fairly fairly decent upper trend uh, since July. Class example of kind of higher highs and higher lows. If we do continue to push on higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this area here, which comes into play in around 26,330. And if we go beyond that, we'd be looking heading back up towards the all time highs, which are reaching January north of 26,700. Move to the downside in the, um, in the Dow Jones may find some support in around this area here, uh, which comes into play at 25,820. Or perhaps even uh, down down at the um, the, the mid September low of uh, twenty five thousand seven hundred and fifty in around this area here. Uh, most, even if you do drop below that, it, it, it may still remain in the upper trend. And the next area for support could come into play at this blue line here, the fifty moving average at twenty five thousand five hundred sixty eight. And also the fifty moving average acts as very decent support on the fifteenth of August. And as I said before, if the metric has acted as support in the past, it makes it more likely that it will act as, as support in the future. Although, of course, there are no guarantees. Taking a look now at what's going on at the S&P 500. Fairly similar scenario there, whereby the market's been in a solid upward trend since April. And a pretty decent upward trend since uh, late June. It was only at the back, at the back end of August uh, that the, the S&P 500 uh, reached all-time high. So it gives an indication of actually how positive uh, the sentiment has been. We've managed to recoup most of the, of the losses that were incurred in, in early September, so things are looking quite positive. Uh, the market's been pushing higher in the last number of sessions. As you can see here on, on the MACD indicator, the MACD histogram, uh, although we are still firmly in negative uh, territory on, on terms of momentum, positive, negative momentum is in, is in decrease. So the market's, been, market's pushing higher. And we can see a steady de decline in negative momentum. So we get that, that move, the, the, the MACD indicator confirms the upward move that we're seeing 
in the in the S&P 500. So it makes it all the more likely that the, this upward move that we've seen uh, since around the 7th of September uh, is likely to continue. If you could, and if you continue to push on higher from here on the S&P 500, we could be looking heading back up toward back up towards 2,916, and then if you go beyond that, 2,920 and 30 would then be the next regions to keep an eye out for. Uh, while if you do, do if you do uh, move to the downside, area support could come into play in around this area here. As I said, the low of, of September 7th, uh, 2,864.1. And even if you drift south, south of there, you may find some support coming into play at, in around this area here, which coincides with the 50 moving average, uh, 2,850. Take a look now at what's going on in the, uh, the gold market. So gold remains very much in the in the, in the downward trend that's been in play since August. Sorry, since August, since April, I apologize, the other A. Uh, market's been a classic example of a downward trend, lower lows and lower highs all the way down. Although we have seen a fairly decent uh, recovery over the last same month, but when the, when the market has bounced back, it, it still really hasn't gained back. It's only gained back a small percentage of the ground that has lost over several months. And notice how when the market did push higher, it ran into the, the 50 moving average at um, 1,209. Uh, this blue line here and actually failed to actually clear that level so this this will be an in interesting area to keep an eye out for um, the market hasn't really gone too far south of uh, of 1200 recently but at the same time at, at the same time hasn't managed to kind of go, go too far north of 1200 either if you do manage to break north of the uh, of the 50 moving average at, uh, at 1209 the next area to keep an eye out for will be this region here in around the 1225 and a big area to keep an eye out for will be 1236 or 1236 to 1237. Um, notice how it acted as in around, it, it, it got down as low as um, as 1237.9 uh, in late, late July, and also the, the rally here in uh, in apologies in late in early July because it got down as low as 1237.9, and it rallied uh, up to north of 1235 um, in late July. So keep an eye for around kind of 1236. Uh, if you do continue, if you do fall back in the, in, the, in the old downward trend, the next area to keep an eye for to the downside uh, will be 1183, 1184. And if we go south of that, we could, you could see back down towards this, this region at 1175. And if we go south of 1175, we could be looking at retesting, apologies, the, the August low at uh, 1160. Um, Taking a look now at the oil market. So we're now looking at uh, Brent crude. Um, Brent, Brent crude hit a, it was, was hitting a multi, mo, mo, well, actually multi month highs um, only at the back end of last week, and the, managed, the market has managed to kind of come back a small bit from there. But it's been in a firm upward trend since mid August over the over the last month. As you said, it, it hit a multi month high only last week, so it gives an indication of how strong this, the sentiment is. While we, we remain north of this yellow line here. The 50 moving average, um, which comes into play at, at 75 spot 71, it's likely that the outlook for Brent crude is going to remain positive. And if you continue to push on higher from there, we could be looking at, uh, at hitting $80, $80 dollars per barrel. And if we go beyond 80, the next area to keep an eye for will be the, the, the May high of 80 spot 89. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting 81 spot 53. And if, we, and if we, once we go be, once we go beyond 80 spot 89. We are in multi-year high territories. Uh, Most of the downside, like I said, may find some support from the 100-day moving average. This yellow line here, which comes to play at 75 spot 71, and even if you go south of that, um, this blue line, the 50-day moving average, may also provide support at 74 spot 62. Notice how both those lines did manage to act as both support in recent weeks, therefore making it all the more likely we could see additional support come into play should we drift lower in the near term. Taking a look at WTI, not as a not as a strong market as Brent, but it's once again it's broadly speaking in the kind of upward trend that we've seen for the last few, for the last say four weeks. Taking a look here from the from the August lows, the market has managed to kind of push higher, but still giving back some of the gains. While it remains north of this red line here, the 200 moving average at six, that's just north of 66 dollars a barrel. It's likely that the outlook is going to remain positive for. For WTI, if we continue to push on higher from here, we can look at retesting the recent highs of 61, 71 apologies, spot 69. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking heading back up towards this area here, uh, in uh, 72, spot 79. And then if we go beyond that, 
we could be looking at targeting 75. Like I was saying, if you take out this red line here, the eternity moving average at a 66 spot or one, keep an eye out for the, er, the mid August low at a 64 spot 66. And if you go south of that, keep an eye out for the early, the, the low in, uh, in mid June at a 63 spot 50, 58. Take a look now at a couple of currency pairs. So the big picture is that the euro has been losing ground versus the US dollar since April, but we have seen a fairly decent comeback uh, in the euro versus versus the pound. Sorry, versus the US dollar. Um, the market began this began this move higher about a month ago. We've had a we have, we've had the, uh, the the push higher here in, in, into late August. The market's pulled back to a reaction low here and appears to be pushing higher here yet again. The note to keep an eye for to the upside will be this region here. Uh, one spot seventeen fifty, quite a bit of um, solid, quite a bit, a fairly sizable resistance area uh, throughout uh, throughout July. So if, you, so if you break north of one spot seventeen fifty, that would that be fairly significant. And the next area to keep an eye for north of that will be one spot eighteen fifty. This region here. And although if the market does manage to turn over on itself yet again, and, I, and if it, we do see a break south of this this region here. In at one spot fifteen ten, that will be quite negative. And if you go be, be out south of one spot fifteen ten, it could take us back down towards the August low of one spot thirteen oh one. And just finishing things up now on the pound versus the U.S. dollar. The pound dollar has also been in decline uh, since all, since since April rather, but we have seen a fairly decent push higher in the in the pound recently. As you see, over the last month, the market it does seem to be pushing higher, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low. Market has been has, has been pushing higher. We're firmly above the, this blue line here. The 50 moving average comes into play in around just 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 it's just south of the one spot 30 region. While we remain above one spot 30 for the pound dollar, it's likely we could see these 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 gains being extended. And if we manage to push on higher from here, the next area to keep an eye for the upside will be, will be this region here. One spot thirty-two fifty. It was acted as a fairly decent consolidation area back in both June and also July. And if you go beyond that, the bigger to keep an eye for will be the early July high. Um, this price here, which comes into play at one spot thirty-three sixty-three. But if we do see the pound versus the dollar drop back below the one thirty region, we could be heading back down towards the early September low. Of one spot twenty seven eighty five, and if we go south of there, we could be looking at it back down towards the August low at one spot twenty six sixty one. Well, if you have any commentary you want to make, or any feedback, positive or negative, on this video or any of the other videos we produce here at CFC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. Well, that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.